thank you very much. I'm sorry, uh, due to visa issues, I couldn't really come, but I will be hoping that this uh, my my small talk can building up this collaborations with your guys and also promote plant phenotyping in plant and the crop research. So uh, things. So from NIAB side, sorry, from Cambridge NIAB side, we have been working, um, sorry, this is a team that we have been built. And also this is a new center that, sorry, where's my mouse? Yeah, I don't have a, my, my mouse at the moment. Um, yeah, so this is a new center that we have been established in Cambridge. And that we will be hoping um, that in the near future, you guys could come over and then we can building, building up new collaborations uh, on so many different areas. Um, my lab is mainly interested in uh, different levels. You can see from cellular phenotyping to tissue and organ and plant level and uh, for population. So some of them at this level is about gene, gene testing and also to understand that how these phenotypic and phenotypic features can be fed into uh, to that they can be feeding to the crop improvement. And at the same time, that for plot and the population level, we are more interested in how to utilize phenotyping to study and then uh, enable the genetic mapping so that we can look into molecular markers in the context of climate, global climate change. So I will be quite quick. Uh, today, I will share with you guys regarding some of the latest uh, low cost phenotyping or affordable phenotyping that we have been established and also uh, been conducting um, between the UK and China. So you can see right here, uh, we are, because DJI has opened its API, so nowadays we can using a smartphone to take, to control the, the UAV. At the same time, we have building this very cheap-ish, um, uh, like a, uh, this is like a what? <laughs> um, selfie stick um, style, but but with the standard uh, height so that we can uh, not taking pictures like this and then apply things like like Euro 5 or nowadays Euro 6 uh, to detect key components of the yield. For example, you can see right here, all of these things are done directly on the smartphone. We don't need to send images to the, the cloud, but we actually uh, generating an, AP, um, an Android app so that by taking a very simple setting, like a, a, a white rectangle, um, we use Android-based OpenCV to cut the, 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 the unit area and then detecting um, key yield components using the YOLO. Uh, the YOLO V5 we are using is linking with mobile net and so that they, they are small enough to run directly on the mobile without any uh, network. Another approach that we have been uh, continuously taking is we're moving this one a bit forward to looking to uh, not only the, the, the rice, but also the wheat um, based key yield components through um, through the, the local setting. As you can see, this is actually material now. I mean, uh, because I'm at the moment in university, I, I couldn't replace it, but we, we have been establishing a new approach to uh, taking smartphones and also Raspberry Pis to take images from the overhead so that we can uh, do not only the rice spikes, but also the wheat spikes detection directly on the smartphone. So hopefully this uh, is the first this is the first thing that I would like to share with you guys. The second part, which we thought could be really interesting, is uh, similar to the, the previous published one on the CGM Nation, which is using Raspberry Pi to control the imagery. We have been pushing this one to the next step, which is using uh, all sorts of image series, uh, imaging device. You can see a smartphone and also uh, some of the some of the, the cheaper image sensors that can allow us to taking images continuously uh, to enable the seed germination and also seedling analysis, seedling as establishment and that analysis. As you can see right here, that's the image, that's the re resolution of imagery. Using smartphone, we can link in directly with OneDrive so that we can analyze through the cloud-based analysis. So to do this, we have been uh, building, uh, we have been training on different parts of the seed germination. You can see right here, seeds level, seeding level, and the radical level, and then feed, feed them into the new seed gen 2 uh, system. So which means that the new seed gen 2 system, we, we can uh, not only look into the seed morphology, but also using graph theory to 
looking to how the radical are changing during time. You can see that this radical tip is basically uh, the, the, the edges allow us to rebuild the system. If I can play back here, then you can see very clearly that when the radical goes, um, emergence happened, we're tracking the radical emergence. The idea is to, well, the, the, the reason why we do that is because within a genotype or seed lot, we can monitoring them, how the, how the radical emergence happened during time. So this, the color, this pseudo color is actually the time, time bar from zero hours to 72 hours. And then each seed has been monitored during the period of time with, uh, with, the, with the reconstruction of the the graph the 2d graph theory and then that's the the reading we 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 feed all these things into genetic mapping and the study uh, at under the stress as well as under normal conditions how um what kind of loci on the chromosome is controlling is is regulating that particular uh, radical emergence um, feature right after we study the seed level in the in the greenhouse or in uh, at lab base, we uh, verify them in the field as well. So by by saying verification, there are two parts. One part is the early seed early seed um, early establishment, like an early uh, seeding establishment, and then we also look into how the linking with yield and quality using different kind of seeds. Uh, this one has been published this season, this summer and uh, we once again these are low cost UAVs and uh, even the multi spectrum UAV is about 4000 pounds 5000 pounds. And uh, we have been building this air measure platform to study how to utilizing uh, low cost drones to fly through large scale uh, field. You can see right here this is the 3D point clouds we have been established constructed with the 2D auto mosaics so that we can divide the the the, uh, the wheat trials. But at the same time, by flying the drones in a different approach with different angles, we can uh, even generating a very detailed uh, understanding and then to reconstruct the canopy structure. Now, we're particularly interested in doing this one for large scale, ultra scale. So you can see right here, these this air measurer system has been applied or the, the protocol has been applied to study the true yield plots with IGT. Uh, these are 2000, these are 2000 yield plots. And then we have been uh, improved our, our air measure platform to study these uh, thousands of yields, yield plots um, within uh, within the, the platform. And, and we can process that, that sort of 50 gigabytes data uh, within about seven hours time. So each plot will be extracted and the end each at particular with each day if we fly the UAVs is basically the, the row and each column is the plots that play the uh, morphological features but also looking to how they are growing uh, and how the how the growth and development changes during period of time. The idea is not only do the phenotyping or getting the data, but also to utilize limited phenotyping time points to generating this growth growth profile. This can be applied to all sorts of traits, not only the height. I'm using height as one example, but this can be applied to all sorts of traits. Uh, the idea, the, the most important, interesting part is if we want to look into how plants are interacting with the, the climate and also how different varieties are growing, if you have thousands of varieties, how they grow in the field with different pace, uh, normally we can, from a human perspective, we can only go to the field and look into at a particular time point how things happened. But using the dynamic phenotyping and dynamic analysis, we can use a limited number of uh, flights or, or time points and building the, the 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 profile growth profile for different traits and then you can see right here we can we can using mathematic we can using mathematically to study where, which particular period of time they change the most as well as when is the fastest growth rate period which means that these this is the the time point the the gene expressions are most active to regulate the, this particular trait that we're interested in. 
So we're using the static trade and the dynamic trades to study the, the rice as well as um, the, the wheat work is ongoing as well. So we, we have several seasons where studies so that we can apply the dynamic phenotyping to study not only the height, but also can be structure, sorry, can be coverage as well as, as well as uh, excessive greenness or vegetative indices. And then we feed them into QTL mapping for reels. Uh, I think you can see right here, these are static based traits, which is the maximum plum height, menu and, and uh, air measure based, computation based. And also we apply them to the, the growth stages or gro the growth phase, the rapid growth uh, growth phase, and the located something, some some loci, which has which are unknown locus, which, which is unknown before. And uh, we apply the similar approach to the land race as well, which, as you can see, these are the static mapping, static phenotype, which is other, which is the maximum canopy height. But as long as we get changing to the growth growth rate to understand how they are change, changing in time, then we have much more informative uh, low, low, low side from the chromosomes. If I move to the next one, uh, this is basically what my lab and my department have been doing at different levels. You can see from cellular level to disease to flowering, which is looking to the anthers, and also the key yield components to the large scale in the field. Even we apply them to things outside the cereals. And uh, we will be more than happy to um, to work with all of you guys in Europe as well as in worldwide to jointly developing this uh, low cost plant phenotyping and uh, to promote the trade analysis. Right, okay, that's pretty much it. Am I, am I on time? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, uh, uh, G.